Welcome to the session on correlation and regression under business statistics. So far we dealt with monovariate or single variable. We understood several statistical parameters on single variable and use it for effective decision. Now we will talk about bivariate or two variables or multivariate more than two variables. Correlation is about relationship between two variables or more than two variables. We will understand by way of certain examples. For example, if you take income and expenses, as the income goes up, generally the expense also go up. Although it is need not necessarily be, but what really happens is that you have a propensity to buy more and you tend to expend and that's how when the income goes up, the expense also goes. Similarly, agriculture production or growth of crops and the fertilizer that you use. Different crops give different yield depending on what fertilizers you use or the soil condition or the rain, monsoon. Again, if you take viscosity as the temperature increases, the viscosity comes down. Okay, so these are all the relationship between two variables or more than two variables. We will understand all these things under correlation and regression. When you talk about one variable is increasing and that is impacting the other variable that is also increasing, it is called positive correlation. And if one variable is increasing and another variable is decreasing, like you know the viscosity of a liquid, it is called negative correlation. There is also one more type of correlation where what to do that you find that as the as one variable increases the other variable also tend to increase for some time and after some time it start declining so it exhibits dual characteristics typically if you take stress and performance when stress increases the performance will start increasing but after some time when stress become more and more the performance start declining so we understand several aspects when you try to find relationship between variables, when one variable varies, how it is impacting the other variable, you get a lot of very useful information. With the help of such information, we can make very useful decisions. As a matter of fact, correlation is extensively used in several walks of life. And anything, everything you generally talk about, the first thing that occurs to mind: does it correlate or does it show any relationship? Okay, let us take another example. The sales growth over a period of several years steadily in a manufacturing organization could be due to very many factors. One factor could be marketing and advertisement. Another could be a good R&D effort in terms of innovation and a new product introduction. Probably the third factor could be is that very uh, improved productivity machines or in production you improve the productivity by way of more of automation and thereby bringing down the cost of manufacture and when the cost of manufacture comes down you tend to bring down the sales price because you have a good margin and when your sales price becomes very competitive in the market you tend to grow and probably a fourth factor could be a very congenial working atmosphere wherein you have good skill development program, training program, low attrition rate, and there's a cohesive team which is working for the goal of the organization. Several factors impact sales revenue or you know growth in the sales. What is more important is to try to identify what are all the significant factors that contribute to sales growth. Correlation finds excellent application in medical field. For example, there are several blood parameters which are correlated to identify illness. For example, you talk about cholesterol and heart diseases. You talk about sugar level and diabetes. You talk about inflammation and infection. Say for example, when you have an infection, your white corpuscles increases. And a particular type of white corpuscles called polymorphous, if it increases, then you say it's an acute infection. And if it lymphocytes is another type of white corpuscles, when it increases, you say it is chronic infection. Another correlating factor with that is that there is something called 
erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So doctors conclude with the help of erythrocyte sedimentation rate and the white, white corpuscles uh, groups whether the inflammation is high or moderate or low and accordingly they take decision in prescribing medicines. Another area could be is that the drugs and its efficacy on various diseases. There are several correlating factors. As a matter of fact, in this COVID situation, we talk about several vaccines. Say one vaccine, Pfizer, is about 94% eff efficacy and Moderna is about 95% efficacy. And we talk about AstraZeneca, that is also about 78% e efficacy. These are all found by way of doing a lot of tests by administering such medicines to the people and you arrive at a correlation factor. There is an immense use in almost every walk of life. Correlation finds an excellent use in concluding or inferring very useful information and based on which you take a very informed decision. In forthcoming sessions we will see what is simple correlation wherein we will try to relate two variables x and y whether x is impeding the y or y is impeding the x and we will talk about multiple and partial correlation where the variables are more than two where the change in one variable how it affects several other variables or the change in other variables how it affects the dependent variable okay and these are all measured okay when you have numeric data you can use certain methods and one such method is Carl Pearson coefficient of correlation for numeric data. We can also calculate correlation coefficient for attributes. There are several attributes we come across in business situations. For example, you talk about a work environment. You talk about cleanliness. You talk about weather conditions. You talk about performance. You talk about ergonomics. And similarly, you can also talk about uh, a judgment passed by judges okay in various competitions criminal cases all these things are attributes and still they are not numeric data and how you do is that you rank these attributes in a scale and try to calculate certain uh, correlation coefficient and such correlation coefficients are done in a method called Spearman rank correlation method and you will be in a position to correlate such attributes also. Finally, a very important parameter in correlation is coefficient of determination. Coefficient of determination is square of correlation coefficient and it tells what percentage or coefficient of determination tells what percentage of data set really pointing towards a correlation and what percentage it does not. It's a very useful uh, information. As a matter of fact, coefficient of determination is used in medical fields very uh, stringently because you require a very high level of uh, coefficient of determination because most of the data should point towards the correlation what you are expecting. Okay, unlike you know other social sciences or some other field wherein you talk about a moderate correlation would be sufficient to take certain decision. It depends entirely on a situation one need to take decisions and also the severity or what I would call the importance or significance of what decisions you want to make. We will move on to PowerPoint presentation. We will see various aspects of correlation and we will see a couple of examples and understand how these correlation coefficients are calculated and how it can be used for decision making.